welcome back to Here Am I. Today is day 10. We're in Proverbs 10 this morning. It's a long chapter. It's, it's deep. It's got a lot, a lot of stuff in it. So let's get started. So this one is Proverbs for all people. These short couplets are what we commonly recognize as Proverbs. They cover a wide range of topics. The first section was written by Solomon. The next two sections were written by others but collected by Solomon. These sayings give people practical wisdom for godly living at every stage of life. And this starting out is the Proverbs of Solomon. The Proverbs of Solomon, a wise son maketh a glad father, but a foolish son is the heaviness of his mother. Treasures of wickedness profit nothing, but righteousness delivereth from death. And what that's saying there is some people bring unhappiness on, on themselves by choosing wrong living. For example, craving satisfaction. They may do something that destroys their chances of ever achieving happiness. God's principles for right living bring lasting happiness because they guide us into long-term right behavior in spite of our ever-changing feelings. Verse 3, The Lord will not suffer the soul of the righteous to famish, but he casteth away the substance of the wicked. And that's saying Proverbs is full of verses contrasting the good person with the wicked. These statements are not intended to apply universally to all people in every situation. Some good people do starve. Rather, the verses communicate the general truth that the light of the person who seeks God is better in the long run than the life of the wicked person. You know, we talk about that all the time. We're looking for the end goal. It's not about right now. It's about the end goal. A life which leads to ruin. These statements are not ironclad promises, but general truths. In addition, a proverb like this assumes a just government that cares for the poor and needy, the kind of government Israel was intended to have. You can refer back to Deuteronomy 24, 17 through 22 on that. A corrupt government often thwarts the plans of godly men and women. Verse 4, he becometh poor that dealeth with a slack hand, but the hand of the diligent maketh, maketh rich. He that gathereth in the summer is a wise man, but he that sleepeth in harvest is a son that causeth shame. And in those two verses, 4 and 5, it's saying... Every day has 24 hours filled with opportunities to grow, serve, and be productive. Yet it is so easy, easy to waste time, letting life slip from our grasp instead of refusing, instead refuse to be a lazy person, sleeping or frittering away the hours meant for, for productive work. See time as God's gift and seize your opportunities to live for Him. That's really good. Blessings, verse 6, blessings are upon the head of the just, but violence covereth the mouth of the wicked. The memory of the just is blessed, but the name of the wicked shall rot. The wise in heart will receive commandments, but a prating fool shall fall. He that walketh uprightly walketh surely, but he that perverteth his ways shall be known. He that winketh with the eye causeth sorrow, but a prating fool shall fall. Verse 10, it's saying there, sin is serious. Not just because of what it does to us and to others, but because it is a personal rebellion against God. He does not take sin lightly, and we dare not either. If there is, in, if there is an area in your life that you have been withholding from God's control, end your rebellion. I mean, if you have minimized and rationalized disobedience, put aside your excuses. Don't wink at sin. Boldly confront it and confess it to God because sin is serious business. Verse 11, the mouth of a righteous man is a well of life, but violence covereth the mouth of the wicked. Hatred stirreth up strife, but love covereth all sins. Love covereth all sins. Love that one. And the lips of him that hath understanding wisdom is found, but a rod is for the back of him that is void of understanding. Wise men lay up knowledge, but the mouth of the foolish is near destruction. The rich man's wealth is his strong city. The destruction of the poor is their poverty. The labor of the righteous tendeth to life, the fruit of the wicked to sin. He is in the way of life that keepeth instruction, but he that 
refuseth reproof erreth. He that hideth hatred with lying lips, and he that uttereth a slander is a fool. It says there, by hating another person, you may become a liar or a fool. If you try to con conceal your hatred, you end up lying. If you slander the other person and are proven wrong, you are a fool. The only way out is to ask God to change your heart. Verse 19, in the multitude of words, there wanteth not sin, but he that refraineth his lips is wise. The tongue of the just is as choice silver, the heart of the wicked is little worth. Verse 20 is saying, a lot of poor advice is worth less than a little good advice. It is easy to get opinions from people who will tell us only what they think will please us, but such advice is not helpful. Instead, we should look for those who will speak the truth even when it hurts. Think about the people to whom you go for advice. What do you expect to hear from them? That's, that's really good. A lot of poor advice is worth less than a little good advice. I really like that. The tongue of the just is choice silver, but the heart of the wicked is little worth. Go to the people that you know that will tell you the truth. It hurts, but that's what you need to hear. Anybody can keep patting you on the back and saying, ah, it's, it's going to get better. Just keep on doing what you do. No. Sometimes you need, you need to hear the truth. I know I've, I've had in my life before. Okay, verse 19. No, verse 21. The lips of the righteous feed many, but fools die for want of wisdom. The blessings of the Lord it maketh rich, and he addeth no sorrow with him. Saying there in verse 22, God supplies most people with the personal and financial abilities to respond to the needs of others. If we all realized how God has blessed us, and if we all used our resources to do God's will, hunger and poverty would be wiped out. Wealth is a blessing only if we use it in the way God intended. I like that. You know, we, we take for granted a lot of times the blessings we take for granted all the time. I'm going to go ahead and say it for all the blessings the Lord's give us. We always, we always want more. Our wondering eye, you see somebody driving the brand new truck and you, you feel like you need it. Um, it's just, we live in a day of want, want, want. We got to have more, got to have more, got to have the best. And you will work yourself into a grave trying to have these materialistic things that are going to take you nowhere in life. I mean, they're, they're not going to help you in, in eternity. Um, so that's, that's really good. He supplies us with all the personal financial abilities to respond to the needs of others. You know, if we, if we prayed every night, every morning, and thank God for everything he's blessed us with, we wouldn't even be able to leave the house. I mean, you think about situations. You might have got in a, a car wreck, you know, when you're mad because you got in a wreck, but the Lord could have had saved you from, from something way worse, you know. You got to look at the good in things. Verse 23 it is a sport to a fool to do mischief, but a man of understanding hath wisdom. The fear of the wicked, it shall come upon him, but the desire of the righteous shall be granted. It's saying there in 24, those who do not believe in God usually fear death and with good reason. By contrast, believers desire eternal life in God's salvation and their hopes will be rewarded. This verse offers a choice. You can have either your fears or your hopes come true. You make that choice by rejecting God and living your own way or by accepting God and following him. I really like that. That's, uh, that's true. You know, we, when we're not living right, we're not saved, you're, you're scared to death to die. To, be, to leave this life is to be present with him if you're saved, if you're a saved person. So... I mean, nobody wants to die, but you shouldn't be scared of it. You know, we got the, we got the Lord on our side. 
and one day we'll get to see him. Um, verse 25, as the whirlwind passeth, so is the wicked no more, but the righteous is an everlasting fountain. As vinegar to the teeth and as smoke to the eyes, so is the sluggard to them that, that send him. The fear of the Lord prolongeth days, but the years of the wicked shall be shortened. The hope of the righteous shall be gladness, but the expectation of the wicked shall perish. The way of the Lord is strength to the upright, but destruction shall be to the workers of iniquity. The righteous shall never be removed, but the wicked shall not inhibit the earth. The mouth of the just bringeth forth wisdom, but the froward tongue shall be cut off. The lips of the righteous know what is acceptable, but the mouth of the wicked speaketh frowardness. Really like that. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you got something from it. There's a lot to learn in, in chapter 10. You know, it's look back at the front of the chapter. We Every day is filled with 24 hours. What are you going to do with it? It's filled with opportunities to grow, serve, and be productive. It's so easy to waste time. We can get on our phones. Before you know it, we done scrolled. Before you know it, we done looked at something for 30 minutes. I ain't got nothing done. Oh, uh, so, you know, it tells us, it tells us about that. You know, people bring unhappiness on themselves by choosing wrong living. We have time to, to work and be, be productive. It talks about sin. It talks about hating other people. It talks about good advice and where to get good advice from. Uh, it talks about God supplies people with the personal financial, financial abilities. talks about eternal life and God's salvation. It's really good stuff. I hope that you got something out of it. I know I did. I do every time I, I open this up. Um, tomorrow we'll be in chapter 11. And we're not even halfway yet. We still got a ways to go. But I want to thank you for tuning in. Thank you for watching. And... Um, Please like, share, subscribe. Stick along with me on this journey. It's uh, it's good. We're learning something. I know I'm learning. I've read these proverbs several times, and I still get something every time I read them. So I just want to thank y'all for tuning in. Y'all have a blessed day. We'll see you tomorrow.